Do you believe? Do you believe? That's what Coach Prime's saying. I cannot believe it. That man said, we coming, we coming. And now it was finally here and the Buffaloes showed up. I got all the observations from being there in Fort Worth saying how my interpretations were and my analysis of it. I'm going to break it down with you um, right now. It's going to be a really, really good video. Might be a little long. You could jump around a little bit if you want to. I'm going to break down the first half what I saw. I'm going to break down the second half what I saw. And I'm going to break down post game everything I saw on the field, give you exclusive access that nobody else seen because the cameras were off. Okay. So I just want to start with number one. Much respect to Shador. Much respect to Dylan Edwards because those guys showed up. Much respect to TCU's number 81. His last name was Curtis. He's an NFL prospect by far. Okay. I don't say this lightly. I don't say this a lot. I'm not a hyperbolic like that because there are a lot of kids that could play. But watching that game, I can say this is a fact. Travis Hunter was the best player on the effing field and it wasn't even close. On the effing field and it was not even close. This man was the, I see why he plays both ways. He was the best wide receiver on the field, bar none. I don't care what color they wore. He was the best cornerback on the field. Matter of fact, might have been the best DB on the field. I didn't care what color was they wore, whether it was purple, whether it was black and gold. He was the best player on the field, and he, time and time again, when the Buffaloes were in tough situations, they trusted him and went with him to go, like, to throw the ball. He could have had two interceptions. He could have had two touchdowns just like that. He ended up having an uh, interception down where I was sitting, and I cannot wait to describe that to you because that changed the damn game. But I'm going to just start with the, the first half, okay? First of all, the Colorado Buffaloes are 1-0. Nebraska, I don't know what you're going to do because one thing Colorado's offense showed, they can score. That was a shootout. And I'm going to talk about how they couldn't run the ball. They just, everybody was just throwing the ball out there in Fort Worth and um, TCU Stadium. And Nebraska, you got your work cut out for you because they only scored like 10 points in Minnesota when they lost. So, y'all going to have to work that out, playboy. Colorado's offense can move. But there was a defining moment. There were a few defining moments. But the moment I knew TCU would lose was in the first half. They unveiled their college football runner-up sign on their stadium. It was odd because typically I would think they want to do that before the game starts. But, hey, whatever reason, they did it at the end of the first quarter. I guess they want to make sure everybody was in the stadium or something like that. And everybody cheered and got into it. They unveiled the play. I shit you not, the very next play they fumbled. <laughs> I was just like, oh, this is a bad omen. It's not going to be like last year, y'all. And it ended up not being like last year. So let me get to my first half observation. It was limited running game between both teams. Um, the We did not see Alton throughout the game. I didn't see him. I was there the whole entire game. At the end of the game, his jersey was quite shiny and white. Their, their uniforms were pretty awesome, by the way. So I don't think they ever got deep into their running back stable. Dylan Edwards came in, balled out. But his main, I guess, additions to the Colorado offense were through the air, which with him catching the ball out of the backfield. Colorado's size is underrated. I know I had a lot of, of trepidation going into the spring watching their kids, but they got a lot of kids in there, and they are comparable to TCU. They were not small in comparison. They weren't minute whatsoever. Now, they're going to have to get that throughout their team, but the people that play primarily, they can match up well, very, very well. So I want to make sure I said that. And I'm going through my rough notes again. Travis Hunter is a standout player. Chandler Morris, he was TC, he is TCU's quarterback, and I could see how he lost his job last year. He got, got injured, and Max Dugan went on a roll, and he never got his job back until this year. Now, Chandler Morris, I don't care what they list him at on – their website, he's smaller than that. He has a comp to Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, in my opinion. And not, not so much speed and size. I mean, well, speed, just comparable size. I think he's actually closer to Kyler Murray. He's a really small kind of a quarterback. But he can throw the ball. And he had a lot of scrambling abilities. And it was 
at times really tough for the Colorado defense to pin them back in the third and whatever and for him to just scramble. Now, Shador Sanders, oh my gosh, standout player. He is going to be in the Heisman race immediately. He said he let everyone know and put everyone on notice. Do not sleep on me. He had the most passing yards in his abs- in his career in college in this game. He was amazing. He is a progression monster. Everything you saw on tape before is everything I saw in person. I will say he's he's you know very Brady like. He'll definitely extend the play and he got in trouble a lot doing that holding the ball a little too long, but he was relaxed. He was focused. He made the throws. He hung in there and took some sacks and was really, really good. Now, I will say his comp to me is more Dak Prescott as far as his body composition. Shador, I really, I had no, I really had no idea of how big he would be in person. He's about a true 6'2". He's not overly tall. And if you've ever met Dak, I, I live in the DFW area. I've uh, stood next to Dak a few times. He's a truer 6'2". Now, he doesn't have Dak's upper torso. The other, other comparison I had to him in my head was Tyrod Taylor. He has one of those frames where he's really small, smaller on his, on his uh, torso, but thicker in his legs. That's how Shador is, is basically composed. He's makes all the throws he's tall enough to see over the line and he's not gonna have to run into timing issues like Chandler Morris ended up having I'm gonna get to that later on in the second half because that made the difference in the game now Prime was optimistic about Colorado's performance you, you can see him very very excited after the game asking the reporters do you believe but he's gonna need more five-star depth he wants to be dominant and i think that colorado is very very good very very good seeing him in person the offense is very very good let me say that they are not a dominant team and that is not and that's okay it's their first year they can get there he wants athens he wants tuscaloosa he wants baton rouge so LSU, Alabama, Georgia, he wants those type of teams to be feared. He doesn't have that. He does not have that team just yet. You know, he has to get a few more five stars, but that is in my rough notes. That's coming. I can, with people seeing what they put out there today, beating the national championship runner up just like that, he's going to get some more five stars in and look out. I mean, really look out. If he gets those recruits like he wants to, oh my gosh, it's going to be crazy. So they went into the second half. The the first half ended 17-14 with um, the the Buffaloes kicking a field goal at the end of the second quarter. Really, really good sign there. That's how you really want to end a quarter. The team seems really the re, seem really confident going into the, the the locker room. One thing I did notice: Colorado's coordinators were on the field. Coach Kelly. And Coach Lewis both were on the field, offensive, defense. And that's kind of odd. I, I've never seen that happen before. Usually, our offensive coordinator is up in the booth. And one of the reasons why they're up in the booth is to see the whole field and see when people come on and call, come off. But more importantly, they're looking for somebody who may have got injured, who may be tired, so they know who to go after. All right. And that's what happened with TCU in the second half. But it came back to bite them. I can't wait to tell you about it. It was absolutely amazing. So second half comes. TCU realized this is going to be a shootout. They cannot run the ball. They both coordinators, really, both uh, Colorado and TCU realized this is about to be a shootout. We're not running the ball like that. Every pass, every play was damn near a pass. Okay. So with that being said, to me, TCU started to be way more physical, way, way more physical. And they started to settle in in the third quarter. And guys who were running across the field, they were getting hit. Jimmy Horn had to come out the game. He was getting hit. And it was, you could just see the Colorado was like, damn, nobody hits us like this. This is new. But they adjusted and got through it. But this is, this is uh, really, really important. The defense for the Colorado Buffaloes, they started to key in on them in the third quarter. They started to do specifically designed matchup plays against their safeties. So Trevor Woods in particular, they picked on him. They ran a, a basically um, 
they put three receivers to the field and they made sure the tight end was isolated with uh, Trevor Woods. And I believe that was Curtis. Curtis gave them a number 81 for TCU, gave them so many fits throughout the game. He is an NFL player, amazing hands, physical tight end, can get down the field, he can run. And he was just a headache for the Buffaloes all day. But that was a specifically designed matchup with uh, Trevor Woods, and they did the same thing to Shiloh. So those are my biggest concerns about Colorado's defense that I saw in the second half. They were physical. They ran around. And they hit people. But when it came to man-on-man coverage, where Shiloh's by himself or Trevor Woods is by himself, they are going to be in for a a long few games, especially when they go against elite quarterbacks. I didn't consider Morris an elite quarterback. He was very very good, but he him being on the smaller side and him not his timing being off really really did not affect the buffaloes to a point where the game got out of hand it was a point where after the second half the buffaloes went up by 10 points it was amazing dilla edwards just turned the corner and just took that thing off the up the sidelines it was amazing and Everybody in TCU Stadium is quiet. Everybody. Everybody's like, what is going on? Colorado kicks the ball, um, kicks it off, and kicks it out of bounds. That's the first time I noticed Warren Sapp being on the sidelines. And Warren is hot. He is pissed because I felt that was going to be a turning point in the game. So Warren Sapp is yelling, man, we can't have that happen. We can't have that happen. And sure enough, he was right. TCU put some plays together, put the ball in the end zone. Instead of still being up 10, they cut the lead by uh, three points. And at that point in the game, it was back and forth. The TCU got up, and this is why Travis Hunter was the best player on the field. Listen to me. This was the most amazing sequence I've ever seen. TCU is up. Okay? They are up by however many points. Believe this is how it went. They got into scoring territory, and Travis Hunter is looking a little tired. I remember thinking he looks exhausted. He was baiting them, baiting them the whole time. And if you listen earlier, this is where I reward you. The offensive coordinator saw that in the booth. He had to see that in the booth. Travis Hunter baited those people. He made it look like he was just absolutely dog tired, making a tackle or running around, whatever. The very next play, Morris decided to challenge him. It was an ISO. The way they had the play designed, the corner would be on the running back, and the running back is usually open. He breaks breaks that tackle. He's in the end zone. Travis Hunter intercepted that ball. I was like, oh, my gosh. The way he baited him was so amazing. He looked four or five feet away from the running back when he caught it. He just leaped out and caught it. I was like, oh, my gosh. It was, he was like a cat. He has cat-like ability. And nobody on the field showed that as a DB. Nobody on the field showed that. It was just amazing. And from that point on, I was like, bro, I see why he plays both sides. Now, he's not Superman whatsoever. A few times he did check himself out of the ball game, And a few times he looked exhausted. And from there, to me, that, was the, that stopped the momentum for TCU I mean in the end of the game it was just it was weird because TCU's fans really thought they were going to win it It just seemed like that and they were in shock that the game was over 40 points it was amazing so the the Buffalo put it away and it was a lot to do with Shador Sanders it was a lot to do with Dylan Edwards and it was a lot to do with Travis Hunter Let me tell you about one more incident. The worst incident that I saw today was Shador between, especially in the the second half, he would run to the corner of the end zone, either corner, just to stay loose. He ran to the end zone where I was near, okay? And some asshole threw a beer at him. This wasn't during the TV timeout. Some asshole threw a beer at him. And you couldn't tell he was like two sections over no one could tell who did it and of course no one was going to say who did it but it was unacceptable a lot of the colorado staff was upset and they were pointing at security they were like somebody threw it who threw it who threw it and it, it was just a bad scene for such a, a good game between everyone i think the the tcu fans were a lot like cowboys fans they weren't they weren't mean-spirited at all except for that 
when that happened, the guy, a guy in the section next to me, he didn't throw it, but he was just obnoxious. He's a fat, roly poly ass looking boy with a cowboy hat talking about it was just the beer. It was just the beer. Everybody relax. Nah, bruh. That was your child, or that was your teammate, or that was somebody rooting for you. You wouldn't appreciate somebody throwing a beer at him. Shut your big ass up. But what I loved about it was he didn't mention anybody's name on Colorado except for Travis Hunter. After that, he's, he just randomly blurted out, Travis effing Hunter, can we please cover Travis effing Hunter? That did my my uh, joy, my heart good and brought me joy with your fat ass. But And you went home with a loss. So when the game ended, everybody stayed around. It was amazing. Shador came out. He was super emotional. Him and his brother. He it was something he worked so hard for and was able to to accomplish this. The, some of the coaches came back out. Coach Lewis. We saw the 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 people, the media that 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 cover the the inside, the internal media for Coach Prime. We saw Bucky. We saw Darius. We saw Neely. So we saw a lot of different people afterwards just come out and show a lot of love. Travis Hunter came out. It was just an amazing thing to to see Shiloh and uh, Shador out there sharing a the moment. It was just an amazing time because the stadium emptied out. It was nothing but Colorado fans and Coach Prime fans, and everybody was screaming. It was just such a, a beautiful thing to see because they're here. They're no longer coming. Like, we here. Do you believe? Oh, and Tom Luganbill. We ain't forget about you. Didn't you say that roster was worse than UMass? Didn't you say that? That same roster you just talked about just beat TCU, the national championship runner-up at home in Fort Worth when the stadium? Let me tell you something. The stadium behind Colorado were all TCU fans. All of them. They would not sell because I tried to get a ticket in Colorado's section. They were not selling those two people. It was on no resale. It was the craziest shit I've ever seen. Everywhere else in the stadium was available except for the sections directly behind Colorado. I don't know what happened with that. All I do know is most of the people behind the, the bench for Colorado were TCU people. That is very hard to communicate. And that sideline, it was my first time seeing it. Their sideline was not big. So those fans were right up against them, yelling. And guess what? They just dubbed their ass. They just motorboated their ass. 40 some points, dropped it on their head. Where are you at, Lugan Bill? That's what I want to know. And let me tell you, by the way, UMass, they got beat by Auburn, trying to do the big leagues, and they lost 59 to 14. They scored 14 points. That's, that's what UMass did. While the Colorado team you just talked about for shock value, just because you want your name and some results, guess what happened? They beat that ass. That's right. That's right. They scored 40 something points on them. All right. And gave you a major F you. Okay. So you might want to rethink your thoughts and write some more articles. And that's just the bottom line. But before I forget, I think that Morris is a talented thrower for TCU. I can see why he's starting. The problem is when you're a shorter quarterback, you have to be on time. You have to throw the ball on time. It is very, very vital that you do that. Chandler Morris was not comfortable. And I'm not saying comfortable from being rushed. He was not sacked that I know of all game. That If you want to talk about the weak points of Colorado, it would be their defense. It was their defensive backfield and the D lineman just did not get home. They did not pressure Chandler Morris in the first or the second half. He rarely got hit. So it was him. He, this was really his first first year back starting since he's got the job you could tell he was amped but I don't think he expected Colorado to keep up with the offense like when they kept scoring they were up 7-0 then they were going back and forth scoring you could tell the pressure to keep up with that output started to get to him because when he threw those balls he was not on time okay to give you an example you are on your third step quarterback drops three step drop one two three the ball comes out he was throwing it on two to give you uh, uh, an example. He anytime he missed a throw, it was because he threw it early. And when you're a shorter quarterback, you can't see the receiver. You can't throw him open because you got to trust that when you throw the ball in this particular window or area, that wide receiver is going to run there or be there. 
every time he missed, it was because he threw it too early. It was super behind or super in front of the wide receiver. And that's why they couldn't move the chains. If he could have been a pinpoint accurate quarterback and he was comfortable and threw the ball on time, I think the game would have been a little bit different. But that would be, to me, the difference in the game. Chandler Morris being a smaller quarterback has to be able to throw the ball on time. And I'm like, shit, son, I don't know what to tell you. You weren't pressured most of the game. The only time you really got pressured is when they took away those windows. Like they, somebody would jump or flash in those windows, a linebacker, safety, whatever. They would play these games with him where he had to hold the ball. But outside of that, he wasn't touched. And he was able to scramble and run. And he, like, he's a gifted runner. And at times, he was a gifted thrower of the ball. When you know him throwing to Curtis was uh, a great connection that Colorado was had really no answers for. But in that same breath, I'm like, bro, this 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 is the big time. Okay, this is the big leagues. All right, you got to make those throws. You are not being touched. It was damn near seven on seven. On the other hand, Shador was so comfortable, and that was that led him into trouble a few times. He would hold the ball, thinking you know he could just wait until somebody got open often and when you do that sometimes you take unnecessary hits everything i predicted with Colorado or tcu's defense uh, eventually happened they didn't really start bringing blitzes until the third quarter and all of it wasn't the offensive line's fault shador has to make sure his protection is set and to me it wasn't he may have not seen some of those blitzes or they thought those blitzes were coming so he would try to hold the ball wait out the blitz move use his elusiveness in the pocket and sometimes that that led him in the wrong place but when he threw the ball he was comfortable he was on time he was able to get it to his his playmakers dylan edwards oh my gosh that boy flashed today that i mean unbelievable player but like i said it was a fantastic game i absolutely loved it being out there in full work and then the buffaloes having to win that i mean oh my gosh it was such a fantastic great game absolutely loved it um they're gonna win some games this year colorado is going to win some games this year so i hope you all enjoyed it i apologize for my lives that that went up didn't have the best quality even though i brought my router it's still just so many people it just it just wasn't clear and it was messing up my um my feed but they'll stay up there it was great it was i had a great time i had great seats and it was just amazing to watch the colorado buffaloes and everybody be so excited afterwards hey we coming